Don't you get me doing? started. Okay. okay, how many people are here to see Josh Williamson? How many people are here for Clay Mann? Clay Mann? Okay. <laughs> Anybody here for Tom King? <laughs> Tom King. What's up? What are you working on? Uh, all the secret things I can't talk. About. Okay. <laughs> Anybody want to know? Okay. Anybody want to know what Tom King is working on? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Let's see if we get something out of it. Let's go. Batman. <laughs> <laughs> That's an easy one. <laughs> I'll say it's after, after Flash War. No, Wally War is a much better title. Listen. Flash War. I'm not going to make fun of what your next book is called. It gives away the title. Because you know I don't work. Oh my goodness. He just kissed him on the neck. I saw that. So after something really dirty in my ear. After Flash War, some of the events of Flash War will continue into another book that Tom is writing. And Clay is gone. Tell us more about the wedding. The more wedding? wedding. Uh, more wedding! Uh, it's in July 4th. It's when really it comes out. Uh, I have half of the art. There's going to be 20 artists on it. It was 21, but Jim Lee decided to draw two pages, so somebody got screwed. He has not drawn the two pages. <laughs> so two Actually, people cool. got unscrewed. <laughs> It sounded like we're getting screwed. <laughs> uh, yeah. Clay, are you drawing anything in that book? Yes. <laughs> okay. By, by the way, that's a really good long answer from Clay. Clay hasn't figured it out yet. Come on, Clay. What are you working on? Let's hear it. You got it. You got to share. That's why we're here. I'll tell you guys, you gotta take this on the road. <laughs> yeah, wait, we're working yeah, on a secret project. Yeah. And Clay just accidentally posted a picture of it on his Twitter oh. without oh. anybody's fucking permission. <laughs> <laughs> so if you wanna see our secret project that we're not supposed to share at all, just go on Clay's fucking Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Who Gossamer is? Gossamer, okay. It's, it's the big furry guy from Looney Tunes stuff. Oh, yeah. 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 This, actually, this whole Looney Tunes pitch is because of you two with this thing. You're the ones that have been wanting to do the story for a while. Yeah. Yes, we, we, we actually wrote it, sort of, and then and then it got killed. And then uh, Dad came back and said, Oh, you know that thing that you can't do? You want to do it again? I'm like, Yes. So, uh, <laughs> and you got paid for the script twice, correct? Uh, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Tom, what else is going on with the wedding? What else is going on with the wedding? Uh, uh, it's the, uh, the wedding night. What's going on at the wedding night? Woo! <laughs> Woo! Amanda's that drawing that, right? Is it, Amanda, you're doing the wedding night book? You're going to draw that one? That's, that's going to be my book, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, so, uh, uh, so, uh, the way the wedding issue works is Mikkel, there's, I mean, there's sort of two parts to it. There's the actual wedding, which Mikkel will draw. And then you're going to see two letters. So if you, if you have a Batman run, it started with Batman and Catwoman writing letters to each other of sort of why they could never be together. And then oh. in, in the wedding, you're going to see two letters that they write to each other of why they sort of have to be together. Yeah. And sort of a reflection of that. And the, those letters are what runs over the art, all those, the Ghibli art and then the mom art. And, uh, um, and, 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 it, and it'll, it'll melt your heart. Oh, let me all have a heart. And I never talk about that. So don't tell anyone. <laughs> I only post that on Clayman's Twitter feed. <laughs> 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 
part of the issue, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I turned, in, I turned in the script, and my editor called me and goes, oh, man, I really love that script. And there was one moment that stood out that was just absolutely perfect. I was like, oh, thanks. I was like, what moment is it? Describe it. I was like, that was so beautiful, Tom. I was like, yeah, that's the thing I stole from Josh Williams. <laughs> <laughs> I did. And so then my assistant editor called me and said, Tom, that was a beautiful issue. There was one moment in particular that stood out to me as the best. And I was like, what, what was it? Was the one you stole from Josh Williams. <laughs> so if you read it and like it, you probably like it because I stole it from Josh Williams. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so this Josh, is, yeah. since you're giving ideas to Tom, how's your involvement on No Justice been? Oh man, No Justice has been great. Uh, yeah, we're having a good time working with uh, with uh, Scott and James to come up with crazy stuff and and uh, doing it in the book, like doing as much nutty things as we can. Uh, last year we met up at Scott's house and we uh, built this whiteboard of uh, at Scott's house and just started coming up with different different characters and different uh, teams we were gonna do. And then we pitched it all to Dan. And Dan said no. <laughs> and rightfully so. And then uh, it would have back and we had made new teams. But it's been a lot of fun. The Justice is a book that's coming out right now. Issue 3 came out, issue 4 comes out next week. We're just having a good time, trying to make something really big and fun in the DC universe. We, we felt like the, the energy from metal people really responded to that, so we wanted to find a way to continue that. Okay, so we have metal fans here right now. Yeah. <laughs> I think they did. I don't know. Did you guys, Scott, are you familiar with Scott Snyder breaking rules one day? Woo! Uh, those guys, they were, it so they were supposed to be here, but they, I guess they had something else to do. Is that what it is? They were in the men's room, man. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hot! <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's a good chance they might still show up. So when they do show up, let's make sure they feel welcome. Maybe they'll say Everybody just boo. But I guess it happens to you. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So it was one of our big goals this year going forward 
uh, you know, that it, you never felt like you were just sort of doing something that had no consequence, or doing something that we dropped the pieces. We want you to feel like things can come back and will come back from Metal and Justice League, and Batman who laughs, other things. Um, the Omega Titans that you see in, in um, No Justice right now have big consequences in the Justice League books. So we want you to feel like Metal was the beginning of a big story that we're building over the next two years. So, you know, with, with the Justice League books, with Odyssey, which Josh is just murdering on, with Justice League Dark, uh, that James is, is going to kill on, we just want you guys to... A lot to, of death. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and with Justice League, which I'm really honored to write, uh, we want you to feel like... I see a homo teeth going on here. <laughs> death, murder, kill. It's always in the subtext. Are talking about marriage? The cheery. The, but the, I want I want you to feel at least like uh, you know it's one giant universe and it's connected. It's connected. It's it feels immersive. It feels celebrated. It feels you feel included. That's why we're using the Hall of Justice, and we want you to feel like the doors open in June. We're really excited for you to come in and see what we have planned. So, I don't even know. I don't even know what the question was. <laughs> Way to answer it. Um, I'll promise you. Um, by the way, pitch you our books. <laughs> 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 I did not, but I will mention it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right now in, in uh, No Justice, we're money balling all of the teams. Uh, it's a really fun series. We're doing it with Josh and with James and with Francis Madipole. Um, and essentially, Brainiac comes down and he says, because of the events of metal, um, oh, oh my, look at that. That's something that's. <laughs> Some excellent cosplay. Thank you. <laughs> Look at that. You don't have any applause for that? Come on. Thank you. Yeah, so, well, the justice is about bringing it coming down and saying because of the events of metal, because of what happened at the end of the source of all the the universe just changed in a huge way. And you guys have to understand that the challenges you're going to face are bigger and crazier than anything that you faced before. And in those ways, you're going to have to sort of. You're going to have to rethink the way you're going to I know, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Wow. That's super impressive. It's really impressive. Yeah. <laughs> you get the strangle scout if he stops talking. So keep going. Yeah. <laughs> no, the strangle scout, get him to stop talking. That's true. Oh, hang on. I got to For the Twitter. Smile. Put uh, uh. <laughs> it on Clay fucking man. <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh... <laughs> The idea is basically, no justice is supposed to show you that our universe is about to get bigger and crazier and you're going to have to find new ways of fighting. New teams, new ideas, all of that stuff. Go to new places you haven't seen before. So we really want the DC universe from you know 2018 into 2020 to feel like a place where you constantly feel surprised, welcomed, terrified, you know, in awe all the time and inspired.
My cup is from Miracle Aid. You want me to tell you? It's on place Uh Yeah, so Dr. Shaq got this team. He's, uh, he's having a good time. But it's really, the, part of it is trying to give that idea of uh, this sense of exploration to DCU, right? The DCU is not the same thing you've always known it to be, right? It's just it's becoming more dangerous. And there's a lot of it you need to explore. And so this Justice League book, all this like Odyssey, is about that, about exploring these things, and taking these risks, going out there and seeing how the DC universe has changed. We got a question right there, guy. Has a oh, we have questions. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you, this panelist. I was wondering, we, we were talking earlier today, there were certain projects that I heard guys were working on that they had trouble getting approved, and things oh. that they weren't working on. Could you tell us what sort of trouble you're running to with editorial, and what things that they stopped you from doing? Oh no, I know what this is about. And I'm, I'm going to go to everybody. You want the, uh, I know a story. Well, I, just, I was, as I, before I came here, I was redoing the comic book, because the fucking publisher of DC Comics. <laughs> They say I have a bad mouth. <laughs> they judge me by my look, but I don't have a bad mouth. They told me I couldn't. I had an excessive amount of piss in Mr. Miracle. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I meant to say piss. Nine panel grids of piss falling. Well, that's the story. Holy shit, he just said that. That's how you do it. Yeah, so we, we, had, we had 18 panels of piss because we're I denominated. <laughs> 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 Sounds like a bar yeah, song, 18 yeah, panels of piss. We got a call from the editor and said, Dan doesn't like this. You know, part of life. <laughs> um, and, uh, so I was. So we had to re-edit it. What, what happened? I thought it was a good scene. We had. They were. They were in. They were in uh, Apocalypse, and they go to a pit to pee because you know where else can pee in the Apocalypse? And they piss, and we follow the piss fall all the way down. <laughs> As it falls down, this deep, 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 deep pit. This is fascinating comics, right? <laughs> And at the very last panel, you see it fall on some poor schmuck's head. <laughs> Here's how you fix it. The, All right. guy, the, guy who's big, the guy who's fan has a prostate problem, so only one drop comes out. <laughs> one drop in the of blackness is far less expensive than a stream. <laughs> That's what I would have done. I mean, I It's just a dialogue because it doesn't naturally come out to you with prostate problems. You do that in the cat. Are you afraid of that? Are you really afraid of that? By the way, this is Anthem after the fall. Okay, so in case anybody's ever wondered what happens in summits when we get all the talent together. This is the conversations that takes place, okay? We're working hard to make the best comics possible, and I thank them for that. I need to do a job with them. Clay, do you have anything to say on this one? I saw the original. Clay always means like too much. Too much, try again, Clay. One more time. Because I gotta do this because that story only gets beat by Amanda Conda's story about the cover of uh, which one? Harley Quinn Rebirth. No. Thank you. <laughs> oh. oh yeah, I yeah, this, it got rejected. We didn't get to do it. I I can't remember who rejected it. Who said no? That would be me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the ironic thing is, is that it, it was not my idea. Yeah, it was your idea. What? It was your idea. No, well, it wasn't. So anyway, Hit him! Hit him! So, <laughs> oh, Ladies, so, hit him. Yeah. Such violence in this crowd. So, many times. so, uh, so when, when Rebirth was being launched, I wanted to do um, a cover uh, with Harley, 
giving birth to a reverse comic and calling it Afterbirth. Shane with a free placenta. That's right. <laughs> Stirrups, or both feet in the stirrups, and she had like Tony and Poison Ivy helping her push. Oh, and then you see a doctor's hands covering everything that needs to get covered to get a decent rating on the cover. <laughs> and she gave birth to a comic. And it was going to be the comic right before the launch of Rebirth number one. And Dan said, Nope. Who's that, Dan? Who's that, Dan? Oh. It, was for, it was for the children. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna remember that, Dan. Okay, okay. The childbirth is beautiful, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Even the way I'm, uh, with the Amanda drawers, it always looks good, but still. Okay, we had a question over here. Question. Yes. Sure. I want to know more about Sanctuary. Oh. Sanctuary. Logan's Run. Logan's Run. Logan's Run. So that's what's coming <laughs> Uh, we're announcing what it is, what it's called, what it is, and uh, it's, you can, you, it's being drawn by someone at this table, uh, okay. and it's me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm here right now, and I'm always having to defend my little comics to my friends. They're like, the more you talk no, about- No, get new friends. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone in comics, they're like, it sounds like they just need a bunch of therapy. That's all. I want to know about Sanctuary. I want to know who's getting the therapy, who's getting it. It's hardly getting it. I mean, she, who else has the degree? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, Sanctuary is so depressing. I feel bad talking about this one panel. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny, right? You read the script. It's, it's uplifting after the urine, so. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's writing in my comics, they just all end sad. But there's funny parts in the middle. Uh, sanctuary is, I mean, that the concept is, um, for people who don't know it, the, the idea is I wanted to write um, about sort of, uh, you know, I was in the war, and you know, sort of this whole generation that went through the war and, and sort of experienced this violence, and they came back and they brought it back to, to America. And I wanted to write about lives of violence and sort of the effects it has on people. And, uh, and I happen to work in an incredibly violent medium, and I love the medium, but that's what we do. We, we sort of, we make punching happen. All our, all, like, every two pages, I'm like, why are these people punching? Why are they kissing all the time? <laughs> Sounds like therapy to me. I'm yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, so I, I, the idea was simple. Was, I mean, it was the easiest idea in the world. It's like, okay, so they're constantly going through violent experiences. They must have effects of that that must sort of happen to their psyche. And if you were Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman, you would realize this, and you would realize it was a, a problem that we had just like in our society. It's a problem we have to confront that has many different effects, and you would create a place that, to help them. And so they create a place called Sanctuary, which is a place that superheroes can go, and the actual rules, and who goes there, and how it works, are all going to come out. Um, but it's a place that superheroes can go to sort of try to relieve that pain that comes from life and violence. And that's, that's what Sanctuary will be about. And uh, uh, well, since it's on Twitter, if you're one of the main characters is Harley Quinn, that's, nobody knows that. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you want to see a picture, it's on Facebook. <laughs> I would like to point out on Clay's Twitter, posing just as exactly. <laughs> 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 the, the, the two main characters are Boozy Ooh, There you go. We got, we got it. That's pretty good. You got it. Any other questions? Right over there. Question right there. Sir. So, you mentioned there's a question for uh, both Tom and Scott. Tom, um, you mentioned about the sanctuary, how it's, um, the, first, the first mention of sanctuary was, uh, uh, the tagline was, the crisis isn't coming, it's already here. So something along the lines of, uh, when, um, when uh, uh, Christ lived on Earth, when that never was talking to the Flash, the Flash faded away. And then Scott mentioned about how uh, metal was just the beginning. Now we have no justice coming out. Now we have, it seems like there's something else happening after that. Is it building to a crisis kind of you know, I'm going to turn to Scott for a second. Scott, what's the biggest thing you could tease? Oh, man. Oh, I can't. You haven't approved it yet. Yeah, I don't. I <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. If it gets a good response, it's approved. No, no, no. Whoa! <laughs> Does that work? Okay, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's do this right. Okay, let's do this right. Okay, let's burn it. Remember, if you don't like it, you still got to buy it. <laughs> 
you remember that? And you're gonna go, what the hell is this story? You all approved it. No, no, no. I'm, 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 not, I'm, not, I'm not pitching it to a player before you hear it. No, 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 You know, in, in reality, when you think about this, think about how long he'll keep talking. Everybody else will get a chance. Everybody will get just a tease. Just a tease. Give us a tease. Come on, you can do it. Well, I'm bringing in the Legion of Doom, and I want to do what Justice Doom more that encompasses the whole world. What do we think? And actually, like Scott, the reason why I like the way you talk about it, it, it shows you the passion and the thought that goes into everything. You know, when we're sitting here, it's, it's really trying to make the biggest, craziest stories possible. And what I get excited about is when the talent gets excited, when the writers get excited, the artists get excited. We always talk about it in the building when pages come in, you know, to the editors and they see something so beautiful, so wonderful, they can't wait to show it to everybody else. You know, because you figure we see so many pages come through every day of the week, so many different books every month that we're putting out, that it gets the people who are hardened professionals who do this all the time, get them stop and be fans again. That's what makes this fun. And that's the connection that I feel sometimes is lost in comics. You know, I get nervous because I see comics, what I call selling horizontally, which means we're selling one comic across multiple covers instead of selling the entire line. And the goal for us is to build that universe. That's why when Scott talks, it's about universe building. When they, we all talk, it's about universe building. It's about sharing the ideas, sharing the stories, make this immersive. One of the things that I got really upset about, you're gonna sound funny, but let me finish the story. Um, what I got really upset when I saw Infinity War, okay? Oh, I didn't see it yet. Okay, okay, I won't spoil the ending. <laughs> Right. Almost everybody dies. Anyway. <laughs> That's a given. <laughs> but, but, the, but the thing was that it was so well crafted and well did comics better than comics have been doing in some places. You know? They showed how characters interact. They showed how multiple stories can take place. All the tricks that makes comics fun and exciting and they're doing it in a movie. Does that make what we do irrelevant? So that's why it's incumbent on us and all of our staff 
to make comics still the source of ideas, the source material, the inspiration for TV and film and games. Because cool. yes. that's what this is about and that's why everybody over here on this dais is so important because it's their ideas that keep our engine running. In order for us to keep these books going, we got to stay in front of the movies. We can't trail behind them. We can't imitate them. They've got to imitate us. Yes. And every time they do a bad thing, they tell you. If there's one thing Marvel's good at, it's copying DC. If there's one thing Marvel's good at, it's copying DC. Yeah. <laughs> and, that's, and so our goal right now is to, to out-movie the movies. And that's why when Scott talks, it's on the right track. When we go emotionally at levels, it's on the right track. We tell crazier stories with strange covers. <laughs> it's on the right track. But anyway, other questions? Questions? Right over there. Yes? I have one um, for Scott Snyder. Um, um, I can tell when I was reading Metal how uh, influential the brand was for you. Um, when I read The Wild Card, it just like, blew me away. Is that awesome working with Grant? Oh, yeah. yeah. Working with Grant is just sort of, uh, you know, one of the great peaks of my career. He was one of the first people to give me uh, a welcome and, and really good advice when I first started at DC. I was just starting on Black Mirror and I went to San Diego and I bumped into him and I, you know, I didn't know him at all. I was like in awe of him. And he had heard, I was on Detective and he came over and asked me what I was doing and I told him the whole story and he gave me such good advice going in. And then when I was at Batman, I saw him again. And every year I was at San Diego, he, he was so encouraging and so welcoming as, as somebody who was writing the other book and, uh, you know, Batman, the bigger book. Um, so working with him in this capacity was a whole other thing where we got to just get on the phone and talk story and I've spoken to him many times since we've done The Wild Hunt. So he's been really influential in some of the plans that we have in Justice League and all that stuff. I called him up when I had my whole story and was like, this is my kind of big two year opus. This is the thing I want to do and, and what it has to do with what's beyond the source wall and what the source wall really is and what the secret is behind it, why it was built, what the figures are in it, all of it, and why everything needs to build to this kind of a war. And uh, he was crazy helpful. He gave me the nuttiest idea at the end. He was, I, I can't give it away, but it was, it was so grand. Or he was just like, then he told me to call Dan Fisher to him. And it was the funniest thing when he was like, do you know what's on the other side of the source wall? Oh, you know, yeah. Yeah, you see, we went in the whole story and he's like, I love it, I love it, you should do it, do it just like that. But then when they get to the other side of the source wall, it's Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's bigger than us and have our hands and all that stuff. But I will say that also he was he was such a great he was such a great mentor coming into Batman and he was so generous that you know it was it was a great lesson in how you want to be even if you're not as good as him, you know, about that stuff. That he didn't have a competitive bone in his body. He was just so such a great person to work alongside. Hey, you know what, I want to go, it's funny because earlier today I was chatting with someone just saying about long runs. And I think one of the successes for Scott and Greg was, was it five years on Batman? Five years Woo! on Batman, which is pretty amazing. Come on! Where did that come from? The seven-year-old. Oh, okay, there you go. Wow, that's a loud seven-year-old. I like you. <laughs> well, you know, I'm going to go to Jimmy and Amanda. How long was your run on Holy Quinn? Four years. Four years. Double ships. Plus. Double ships and specials and oh, it was miniseries. Ships. Yeah, it was. Was yeah. there any story you couldn't tell in the time that you told the book? Yeah. Oh, a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. Which give me give us some. See if they would fly today. Uh, a lot of sex. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Ivy and Harley stuff going on. Yeah. Really Cat sex. Um, <laughs> let's see. Well, there was some BC stuff that. Was, <laughs> uh, well, there was, you know, there was. We did some, do that. Every. Uh, Simon Bisley did draw Harley and Lobo naked for a lot and we had to for cover an war, for an entire issue where we had to cover it with war balloons. <laughs> <laughs> and, and little flags, if anybody noticed. Um, no, they, no, actually, you know, as crazy as we've just had to tone down pitches. Because everything we come at you guys with, um, no matter how wild it is, you said, well, if you can kind of tone that a little bit back and make it and still make it work, because uh, I don't think there's anything where it was just DOA mm -hmm. while we were doing it. I don't think there was anything. You, you actually, the, the editor, it's Chris, and you, and just said, well, if you could pull it off, but make it, make sure it makes sense to the character. Do you have Holly, Holly fans here? How'd they do? Good? Woo! Okay. There was a short period of time where 
tell that I never got a chance to tell them. Now I can't think of them. And I know like 10 minutes after the panel is over, I'm going to be able to say, oh, it was those stories I wanted to tell. <laughs> and now I can't. I might run my brain here. No, no I, can't. I can't think of what it was. You know what? Now I'm going to go over to Josh. Because Josh, you've been having a strong run on Flash. So how has that been? Because you still something you were building towards or when did that come together and what do you follow a flash roll with well so flash roll was actually a conversation i had uh two years ago with tom and uh and Wally Moore. yeah <laughs> <laughs> and uh and uh, and uh, steve orlando we were all talking about it. but back then we were like oh we can never do this we can never do this and then uh about a year ago we were talking about was i going to leave the flash book was i going to leave it and i was like i'm not ready to leave it yet i don't want to leave it but you can't just say I'm not reading this book. You have to have a story. You have to be able to come to somebody and say, this is what I want to do. And so I, I uh, had this idea. I was like, you know, this is going to be ever done before. And it's very, very wise. But there's no way they're going to let me do that. There's no way. So I didn't tell anybody about the idea. Uh, and then I went and met with Dan. And I sat down with Dan. I'm like, all right, I'll pitch you something right now. You didn't want, you didn't want me to pitch you that, that day. You just wanted to have a drink and hang out. But I was like, no, no, no. I'm fired up right now. I have to do it. I have to do it. And so I was like, I'm going to pitch this thing. I think you're going to hate it. I think you're going to hate it. I want to use this thing. Uh, I'm going to call it War of the Flashes. Oh, this is a War of the Flashes, and it's Barry versus Wally, and this is why. And then Dan was just like, I love it, we're doing it. That's it. We did, did, so did, did, has it. anybody ever heard the sweaty Josh story? <laughs> no. <laughs> you don't know this? I'll tell the story. I'll, I'll, yes. I'll tell the story. I'll tell, well, I want to say this other thing, though. There was something that we were going to do after Flash <laughs> that we decided not to do. And you were talking about this morning that I want to do next year. Okay. Do you, can I say what it is? You're like, no, don't say it. No, don't say it. No, unless. Unless we pitch the audience. All right, this is what I want to do. Oh, I don't know if I want to ruin the ending, but uh, so one of the big things I really want to do in the Flash that's never been done is I want to do Flash Year One. I've been do Flash Year One with Barry, and I've always wanted to tell a story about where Barry got his optimism from, and I have this uh, really crazy twist on your one that I really want to do and uh, we're gonna we're talking about doing an after flash where we push it back so that's something I really want to do. You got five money. Yeah. Oh. 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 <laughs> but so Dan wants to tell the story. I'm sorry to be tough with this. I really did. Yeah. Put these make these guys work a little bit. So the story is what's it? Can I can I do Harley Deadpool? <laughs> yeah. I can't say yes. I can only say half yes. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, any other questions in the audience? Bear me out. Get me out of this. Quick. Uh, any chance we'll be able to see Amanda and Jimmy do a Shazam book? Yeah. I never, I never thought about it. I, I, uh, I just think your writing style would be a perfect fit for the guy. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it would be fun. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> we got another question right over there, sir. This one's just for Mr. Pulo. Uh, I have a friend who's utterly obsessed with swamping, and he's been creeping on like your Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he told me specifically if I go and talk to you, he just wants to know if like a release date or something. Like, All right, here's the story. Metal. Tell them the story. <laughs> so there's the story. So I did metal. You saw I got to draw a swamp thing for like a page or so. Yeah. And I had so much fun that I said to Dan, I said, uh, hey, you got to let me do a swamp thing book. <laughs> and he goes, uh, he goes, now you know I can get anything you want, right? <laughs> So it gives me this big Wonder Woman pitch, you know, and uh, that's what I thought about it, right? And uh, what the hell? And he goes, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he goes, uh, I, so I go, all right, I have a Wonder Woman. Come back and wrap my mind around Wonder Woman. And I go, but then you got to let me do, you know, I don't know, pinups or covers or something. He goes, I get, he goes, I'll tell you what. He goes, you do covers, I don't have a book, but I'll, I'll make a book to go with your covers. And so I turn my first cover, he goes, <laughs> so that probably will happen at some point, but right now, you know, I'm only focused on doing what Scott and I have next, which is our final Batman tale. And uh, so I'm turning uh, my sixth uh, Swamp Thing cover, 
Also done some covers for Jill and Dark, and then I'm turning everything out so I can focus solely on our last and hopefully our very best Batman story that we do together. So, Swamp so Thing, no, no date, but there's the real skinny on it. Uh, that's what's going on. Look, okay, Hector, it's got, it's got a question. Scott, did we have announced this Batman story? Yeah. Oh, we did? Okay. Do you want to give them, a, give, them, give them an idea of what's going on there? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so it's a story that I've been thinking about. It goes back to what I was saying about Grant, actually. When I started on Batman, I was really, really uh, just incredibly petrified the whole time about the, how intimidating it was for his character. He was the one that was like, well, you have to give him kind of a birth, and you have to give him a death to make him your own version. And so I started thinking about that, and Zero Year was very much kind of our, the beginning of our Batman based around the things that I kind of wanted him to make my kids great face of. And then I started thinking about this story at the same time, sort of how our Batman ends, what would happen 25 years down the line, 30 years down the line. So um, I started talking about doing it with Sean Murphy for a while um, because Greg and I had other plans, and then Sean really took off with White Knight, which I think is terrific. And you know, I was lucky enough to read in really early form, and it was already great. So I'm um, crazy proud of him. And the farther we got in that, the more it made sense to let him do his second volume and instead, because Greg's schedule was opening, to be able to do something to do this together. It only felt right to do kind of the last Batman story, the two of us. So it opens with Batman kind of waking up. He's young. He wakes up in this kind of desert. Uh, it's almost this kind of white and pink desert. He climbs up out of the ground and he finds the Joker's head in the jar and the head is still alive. Come on, who doesn't want to draw that? <laughs> and well, he, but afterwards. And it almost remembers <laughs> what happened, but doesn't wait, so he clips it to his belt and starts walking, and that's the beginning of the book. Oh, so, that's wonderful. Yeah. I've been, I've been, I've had it in my head as he knows for many years, so I really hope you guys like it. One of the things that I'm really excited about with it too, that I would make like a big selling point to you guys is, you know, I love Batman. It was the ride of my life with him, but it was also a grind where it's every, every month you have to keep it, you know, really selling well. And it's got a huge stuff. And you're on the wheel and you don't get a day off. It's just always, always, always. And with this, it's the first time he and I have ever gotten the chance to do it at a pace where we can experiment a little bit, and he can take extra time with the page. Not Maybe kill myself. Try, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Try different styles, you know, all that kind of stuff that fit the story, different writing styles, different art styles for each part. So I really, I really think it will be our best thing that we've done, and I'm deeply proud of, of the story and all the kind of creativity he's already bringing to it. So I hope you guys like it. They gave me a little more time on metal, so I was able to put a little more in. And they're giving me even more time on this, so I'll put even more in. So I, I'm hoping that you know it's the best thing that you've seen us do together. You know, and that's just not to try and sell it. I really, that's my hope. I I, I treat every job like I'm just still trying to get in the door, and so uh, it'll be no different from this. And and if, and if I really uh, mean what I say, which I hope to mean what I say, that it be my last Batman story. Period. Of course, I want to go out on a on a high note and really leave you guys going, wow, that was great, and thanks so much, you know, so we're going to give it our all, you know, and we got a really good, strong story to start off, so it'll be all up to me now to make it or break it. All right. Thank you, guys. With, uh, speaking of White Knight, and also the Kyle Higgins Nightwing story, some other stories you guys have announced that are basically Elseworlds tales, are you bringing the Elseworlds line back, and if not, why not? Everybody <laughs> I don't know if I can answer that question. <laughs> no, you, no, no, wait, hold on. I have to say, Clark Bull, can you stand up? That, that's, that's my watchdog. <laughs> no, stand up, Clark. Just, could you explain your role while you're here? Uh, I'm here to watch Dan. <laughs> <laughs> so, he just walked in. Five minutes early, you would have had an answer. <laughs> so, I'm really sorry about that, but blame Clark. Next question, another question, right here. Uh, for Jim, stand, stand, everybody's got to hear. For Clay and Tom, uh, what'll keep you at DC long term besides the characters? Want it. Clay? So, I think we start with Clay on this one. Too much. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, no, I, I honestly, I'm loving DC. I really like the movie. It's, uh, I mean, I, I started Marvel and I loved it, but comparing DC, they don't even. DC's better than Marvel. Ooh. 
Mm -hmm. I grew up Marvel, so I never wanted to come to DC, but I don't think I ever want to go back. Let's take a keep you here, besides urine. <laughs> you, you missed that earlier, Clark. Sorry. <laughs> This is sentimental, but honestly, it's Dan Dio. I know he, like when I was outside of comics, everyone hated Dan. I don't know about the But like, but he had a bad reputation as someone sort of, um, yeah, he was like a cartoon character, who, like he was supposed to be mean to creators. And then I got to know him, and he, he's a he's a fucking risk taker, and he cares deeply about these characters. And beyond that, he cares about the creators. This is a guy you don't know this stuff, but um, something Marvel would never do. He goes back and finds the old creators and makes sure they're taken care of, makes sure they have money, and makes sure they can pay their health care bills. I mean, he takes care of some high income. Next question. <laughs> so, if money's not an issue, is that what you just said? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I heard, money's not an issue. <laughs> Thank you for that. All value has to bring off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right up on the eye. <laughs> hey, we, going back to metal and no justice, we saw Starro there kind of have a new personality. Is there any chance we're going to see a lot more of him? Like maybe he gets an orange lantern or anything? Well, did you read the <laughs> last issue? Character? Did you read the issue that came out this week? I haven't seen that yet. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You know who loves Starro? You know who is the biggest fan of Starro? Scott. Like, that's where you get that from. I, uh, I don't know, it was like late night. I probably had a couple drinks with you guys, and I was like, I'm turning him into this. What? That happens in the one that just came out yesterday. No, some, no something that will make you sad. Something <laughs> 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 that will make you very happy happens in Justice uh, what is that Legion of Doom? Uh, five. Uh, yeah. yeah. Happens there. So you will see Star again. Yes. Let's go over here. Flash! Uh, oops, Sansa. When will there be another strong JSA book? Like another, like, standalone JSA book? JSA is one of those projects we just have on hold for a moment. I get a lot of JSA questions. I get a lot of Legion questions. Same answer. No answer. <laughs> okay? <laughs> there you go. I like Power Girl. He's a power girl fan. That's it. On the aisle. How, how on the can aisle. you not love them? So much to Dan's dismay, Dick Grayson is still alive. <laughs> I have. You know how many times I've tried to kill Dick Grayson? You know, <laughs> seriously. And so, and we've seen some hints that uh, you know he's supposed to take over the Justice League with the reshuffling. Is that true? <laughs> oh, okay. He's supposed to be dead in Justice League, right? Yes. So, okay. 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 Go back to you again. Um, the question. That, you know, we've seen that he's supposed to lead the Justice League in the future. Is there any chance we're going to see him uh, morph into these new Justice League books? No. <laughs> <laughs> he's not, he's not in it. But he has a great book. He has a great book in Nightwing. And there's lots of good plans there. So, and, you know, At the wedding. Happen. Did he go to the wedding? Does he some, is he the best man? He is the best man. What? Is what? what? I don't, I don't, I don't say that. But um, <laughs> uh, uh, but we're doing. I love Bat Batman and Robin. I used to write Nightwing for a few years, but I brought Rogan. So um, uh, Nightwing is going back into the cave. We're doing some Batman and Robin issues with Batman coming. So we be some huge Nightwing stuff in the proper Batman book. So you see Nightwing drawn by um, uh, by the best artist in town. Greg's All the way in the back. Wait, Greg's drawing up. Since Swamp put on hold for a little while, are you changing the Animal Man series coming back? Who? Something isn't Justice League Dark. Yeah. Yeah, he's one of the main characters in Justice League Dark. If this guy won money. I don't have to, he's not writing it. <laughs> <laughs> Next one, we got a couple more on the aisle, right there. So, Oops, Prelude, custom. So, Prelude to the Wedding has characters facing against each other, like Damian Wade versus Rachel. Which pairing that's going to be going against each other is going to be your favorite? Ooh. Uh, 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 I think Tim Seeley's writing it because he's one of my best friends. I, I, uh, I like the Joker and Harley Quinn because I think there's so much uh, 
um, I don't know, I think that's like almost this weird parallel relationships with Batman and Catwoman. And, and I, I think there's just a lot of depth there in sort of how she's a she's a survivor of that. She's, she's someone who's been in this relationship and sort of that's, that's part of her. I, that, that, that's the one I, I think is um, sort of the dark mirror of the whole thing, the steel of race. Okay, we got. I think we have time for a couple more. Right over here, right here. I'm sorry, Sir Stentham. Okay. Yep. In continuity, does Harley Quinn and Joker have a kid? Ooh. No. How about that? In your version, nope, no, 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 no kids. No. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> over here, sir. Right here. Yep. We were high fiving because we don't have a kid. Oh no, behind you. <laughs> I was going to say, this is not the place to find out you had a kid, right? <laughs> After you, sir. Hey, um, talk about Mr. Miracle for a minute. I had a conversation with you earlier, but I want yeah. to know, what the hell is going on, man? <laughs> it's all upstream from here. <laughs> uh, there's a war between Apocalypse and New Genesis, and they're fine. Uh, you mean, like, there, I mean, there's, there's like a, Mr. Miracle might all be in his head. It might be that it's all dark like cool in him. It might be that it's having a Jacob's Ladder experience. Um, it could be any of those things, and there will be a definitive answer, and it will be an issue 12. Okay. All right. I, I don't think I have time for any more questions, but we, we have another panelist this week. So we, you guys, here, everybody here all weekend? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. That's good. Okay. So you guys got to come on back. we get those questions later on. If anybody's here just Thursday, you get your question answered right now. Don't pretend. <laughs> okay, we're good. So we're going to turn it back to the panelists one last time. These guys are going to leave with something that's going to make them guessing about what's going on in your books. Okay? I need one good clue about what you're working on that's non sequitur that can be taken completely wrong or completely right. Starting with Josh. So in Flash War, uh, everyone keeps thinking that the winner might be Barry or Wally, but it might not be. That might be somebody else. Mm. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, the winner of Flash War might be somebody else. You might not expect. Clay Man's Twitter. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Superman. 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 Superman.